Hey, Child Free Wealth listeners. So what you're finding here is this is a bonus episode, or a series of bonus episodes technically, where I sit down with Anna from We're Not Kidding and her husband Grant, and we go through financial planning. Like real financial planning, life planning, their numbers, their life. And what you're going to find is they're like a lot of people. That means you might be able to get a little bit about what the process is for being financial planning and kind of tips and tricks, but this is not advice for you. I'm giving them advice, not you. So this is for entertainment and educational purposes only. There's a series of these episodes. So if you like this one, grab the next one. Um, maybe just following up on some of our homework from last week and putting together, um, yeah, some of our numbers and goals and I think they were very rough goals, but yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, I had a puppy. Oh, how cute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's Tuco. Tuco with the best. Minute, but... Yes. It's Great. it's cold here. <laughs> All right. So let's start with um, some homework and just check lo- checklist items, and then we'll go into the bigger goal stuff. Um, anything jump out at you when you're doing all that paperwork or anything like surprising to you or? It's reminded of some loans I forgot about. (laughs) (laughs) We'll add those on as we go along. There's some things like, so (laughs) it's, we call it housekeeping stuff. You're like trying to like, what do I have? Where are my accounts? And how much do I owe? And like, it part of what we're doing. So I'm sorry, it's a way to say it, but we call it an in case I die file, where mm-hmm. if one of you disappeared tomorrow, the other person would be kind of lost. Yeah, you know, like what are our accounts and where is everything? And that's where it gets a little confusing. So yeah, that makes sense. So are you doing something, Anna? No, maybe I don't know. It's gone. All right, <clears throat> a couple things. Let me just kind of check through a couple things that, that jumped out at me. Um, so, Anna, I saw you have your whole own health insurance, but Grant also has it through work. So why do you have your own? Um, I think when you started your job, you weren't sure. Yeah, we were nervous about the coverage area here. Um, and uh, I think since then we found that that is better um, my employer doesn't contribute anything to a spouse's health insurance. So, um, it was about the same cost wise. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is something that we are going to look at again this year. Um, I think and see if it still makes sense. No well, time to do that would be now when do you have yeah. open enrollment now or. Um, I followed up after our last conversation. Um, I don't have the the paperwork yet, but I'm hoping that now that the holidays are past us, we can get some of that information real quick. Um, I did look and kind of see when that was happening last year. It felt like it was happening late in the year last year for them. But um, yeah, I'm still hoping to get that information so we could look at that together. Did they give you like a date when it's due? Because usually there's a pretty hard and fast date. It was January 15th. Oh, okay. That's late. Uh, so that'll work. Um, we'll just have to make sure to schedule uh, before then. Yeah. And then what we'll do is make sure I get the packet before that so I can go through it and look at it. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, other one on that. This week and I'll send it to you as soon as I have it. Perfect. The other one on that health insurance, Anna. Um, do you know if you're getting a subsidy through the marketplace for that? Um, I don't know. I don't remember for last year either. I know that historically we have been, our income changed a little bit this last year. So it may have been not as much of a subsidy of a, um, not as subsidized as it has been in the past, but yeah. Cause we were on the marketplace before and we didn't pay anything mm-hmm. in, um, but. Yeah. That's what I was trying to figure out. So, so when did Grant's income change? I'm just trying to get the timeline in the schedule. April. Okay. So we've got one of two things. We either have to go back to the marketplace and say, oh, by the way, this is our new income for next year. Okay. Which then is going to change that rate. And or we have to get you off the marketplace and go on to Grant's. Okay. Um, the other thing is we when we look at Grant's plan, 
just thinking we have to we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get together kind of middle of December because the marketplace closes for the year before your open enrollment closes. Mm. So we'll, to, <clears throat> we'll do a math equation of both. And and understanding health plans, like I swear I spend so much time trying to figure out people's health plans and I still don't get them. <laughs> so like we'll do the math on deductibles and all that fun stuff. Cool. Uh, okay. But what I want, what I'm watching out for Anna is you might end up with a penalty this year because your income went up and we didn't tell the marketplace. Oh, mm. okay. Okay. And that'll come out in your taxes, but yeah, not a big deal when it changes in the middle of the year, but like for next year, <laughs> we have to have it right. If you're going to stay on the marketplace. Okay. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other one to keep in mind, kind of just one of those fun ones, is you're actually able to write off the healthcare benefit as a self-employed, which saves you a little bit of money, but we'll have to look at the deductibles and all that on the other plan to see if it works out. So we'll get it there, but that just makes good sense. Yeah, I don't think we thought about that mm -mm. <laughs> or knew about that. Mm -mm. Um, let's see, we are member... So I'm gonna in the homework. Um, I I saw you already. Anna was Anna was like a, a head of things. Like sent you an email link. I wasn't gonna talk about it later to get into the right capital system, but you already like played around with it. Um, do you have a PDF of your last year ta last year's taxes? We do somewhere, don't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm gonna show you in Right Capital where to upload that. So oh, by okay. the way, any documents from now forward, you just upload them in the system because that's a secure storage. And I will run your taxes through, I have a, a system that's called a list of plan that does like, what if this and what if that and like tax planning on top of what I do. And we'll take a look at it and see if there's anything we can do in the last month or two of the year that we can take advantage of. I don't know if there's going to be, but okay. we'll take a look. I'm just going to make no homework taxes. All right. So that explains the health healthcare. I was trying to figure that out. I'm like, just one of it didn't matter. All right, a couple other things. Um, your auto insurance I saw is three eleven. Is that for six months or twelve? Uh, it is for six months. Okay, so I I was right on that. Um, another one, kind of in the homework side, your IRAs. It said the primary beneficiary was Grant and the secondary was Anna. Is that the way it's actually set up in your account? Because it should just be that Anna's the primary. Um, I don't know, to be honest, I remember okay. that question. Um, and I don't know, but we could find out for you for sure. Well, we can put it aside for now. Um, we'll do all of your accounts and beneficiaries at once. It was just when I was like, I saw it and I was like, wait a minute, something's weird. So I wanted to check that. All right. And I technically think I do have a Roth IRA too, but I, or something, but I haven't contributed to it since I left the place where it was started. So I have to dig and find all that info. All right. But part of what we're doing is the housekeeping stuff. I mean, it's, it's just finding everything. Yeah. So this was the system that you were, you know, you'd gotten into. Um, the vault that I was talking about is under the three dots. That's where you upload okay. things. Okay. All right. So that's where the taxes will go? Everything. Yep. And what happens with this is you can link accounts. So if you hit this plus little thing here, you can actually just do a single site login into whatever your bank or your uh, investing. And then we can keep track of it all in here. That's also going to allow me to look and see like what are you invested in and you know what should we be invested in and what are we saving and how much are we spending and all that. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, do this after five o'clock because... Some of the banks don't allow you to add it in oh, there. Okay. All right. So we have that. All right. Let me go back to my overall discussion. All right. So I saw Grant penciled in there. He wants $1.5 million for retirement. Is that a okay. magic number or is that just like pull the number out of your behind or what? It is a number that I just pulled out of a <laughs> podcast that I probably heard 
I don't know, a year ago about this time um, saying uh, this is a good number to shoot for. So that is that is uh, not based on anything um, except for a, a podcast from music from a year ago. Um, and I saw 60 ish for retiring, but I got the feeling you two like retiring is not the number one priority. So kind of talk to me. Yeah, I think for me, it's not so much about retiring. It's about like maybe transitioning to a different type of work that is less demanding at age 60, where it would be great to still work and maybe work four days a week or something less. So um, yeah, that's my, like my concept of retiring is, is, is not really like quitting work altogether. Um, and I remember thinking about that after I filled out that form. And I think, well, well, I'll let you speak for yourself, but. I would be similar. Yeah. Okay. So we're saying, you know, when we get older, we want to do something different, but we're not like quitting work and like falling off the face of the earth. Right. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, we're going to go to the bigger goals in a second. I'm just double checking some things. So. So I saw a home improvement. We got some goals in 2024. Is there anything broken or is it just kind of like we want to do some nice stuff? Yeah, we have some renovations in progress that are we would like to totally wrap up, I think, by then. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them will be wrapped up next year. But I think, yeah, if we tackled the bathroom the following year or something, um, that would feel that would feel good. Mm -hmm. house would feel complete um yeah so and it feels like um yeah we've we've invested a lot in fixing up a house that was kind of a um a fixer upper when we bought it and there are just a, a couple more things that feel like would i don't know the house would feel on the whole updated instead of updated in three or four areas. Mm. Okay. So they're, so technical terms, their needs, not wants, you know, the house isn't broken, you know, leaking. It's let's make it nicer. Let's do things. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I saw like a year later, you're like, let's move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, welcome to our world. <laughs> well, we we actually we talked about this since, and I remember filling filling this uh, out correctly, but we or quickly, um, but we did talk about that as maybe like a a, a goal for eight years from now, um, or something like that. So I think the timeline that we may have shared is was a little um, ambitious. <laughs> maybe it was you wanted the money to be able to build the next house by that time, but we wouldn't actually start it then. Um, I don't know what your thought process was. No, I think it was like, um, I think also I was in an impatient mood when I filled, <laughs> when we filled that out together. And I was like, can we just get out of here and start the next <laughs> oh, chapter? Wow. You but, know, um, I'm not feeling the love there, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> he meant out of this house. <laughs> get out of this house. Oh, okay. Do, not this situation. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so. so you want to like build something that you want to like, is like a dream house trying to build or kind of like talk to me about it. Kind of what is it? What do you, what are we trying to do? Yeah, I think that is, um, it was interesting to read your, uh, Anna shared with me your like uh, description of the gardener and the rose and like some of your goals. And I think um, building my own house has always been a goal of mine. And we've mm -hmm. built some, tiny houses in the past and I I I think I'm um yeah has always been like a dream of mine to build like our maybe not our final final house but um yeah to design and build a house and so uh I feel like if in eight years financially we could start to make that happen that would feel really good not our final final house. <laughs> well, I don't know. We we get so antsy with our houses. <laughs> we. <laughs> I get really antsy with houses that we we've like always fixed up houses and um like flipped is like an exaggeration, but um yeah, I really like the idea of building a house, and it would be great if it was our forever house. 
Okay, so let me just check a couple things there. And by the way, I, I hear you on the Garden of the Rose. And we're going to come back to that because that's going to be a big theme for you two. But are we talking about Grant like you're like literally like swinging a hammer building it? Or are you talking about like you being the contractor? Uh, yeah, both. Um, you know, probably not uh, swinging a hammer the whole time. But yeah, doing quite a bit of it myself. Okay. So we're literally talking about you building a house. Um, so my guess there is... All right, so let's go to look at these numbers. Mm, 2025, 20, 2026, 20, you're buying some land. You know, mm -hmm. then a year or two later, you've got you're actually like, you know, digging or you know, whatever it is. Like, mm -hmm. so we're talking about gonna be spending some money in three, four, five years, and then moving in six, seven, or eight. Is that kind of yeah, or even starting in six, seven, eight, and and moving in a few. Um, for me, I'm much more excited to like build it than move into it, which maybe is probably not the case for you. But um, as long as we're not living in the construction site, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that a lot. By the way, anyone that's ever done renovations while they live there always regrets it. Like it's just gonna. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Grant, let's play with it for a second and then we'll come back. Um, what if the goal is to do that all with cash? So we're we're buying the land, building the house and do it in cash at the speed of cash too, you know, where we could do parts of it over time. Yeah, that's, I think that's really attractive. Uh, it, it, it feels like in some ways it feels like out of reach, but, um, but I, I'd be curious to, actually like crunch the numbers and feel like oh actually if we waited 10 years we could do it all in cash instead of starting an eight or i don't know i yeah i would be curious to figure out some of that stuff um that'd be really appealing and it would be nice to know also um because it is kind of an abstract idea but it would be like well do i need to work half time to be able to afford that or could i take uh, eight months entirely off of a job and and just focus on that or um, yeah I think I have more questions than answers but um, uh, I think that is uh, I don't know if 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 I have like a, a a primary sort of like goal in the next 15 years that's that's mine so it'd be cool to figure out how to make that happen it, well and where I'm going is the kind of I'm hearing it's more about the journey than the destination. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I'm just playing with this for goals. So remember, if we go back, we're going to go talk about budgeting, but part of budgeting is we have to like set goals for why we budget. But if you're building it by scratch or, you know, with some help as appropriate mm -hmm. and it takes you five or six or seven years to build it, that's perfectly fine yeah. because it, it you know, it's somewhere across between a hobby and a new house. Is yeah. that fair? Yeah, absolutely. Now, Anna, would that drive you crazy? <laughs> um, again, maybe this is being too optimistic, but like if I had, you know, if we had our own like space that wasn't the construction site, I think I could deal. We're talking in this picture I'm painting. You're staying there, and he's like on the weekends over there swinging hammers. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Grant, kind of just play with this a bit. If I got you to a point where you're swinging hammers earlier, but you're still working full time, is that better than you know cutting back work and mm. doing it later? Because we have a choice. You could do you know you could do part time building the house. Or full time build in the house and then work is the opposite. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, I'm definitely always antsy to start sooner than later, but I don't know if that's the best. But I think if I like if I was in a situation where I um was working um two or three days a week and building the house three or four days a week, um like that would be, that would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Would you rather do that two years later or start earlier 
and be doing it on the weekends and extra time. Um, I guess I would rather start earlier, if I'm honest. Yeah. Okay. There's plenty of like prep and surveying and planning and yeah, that would be sweet. All right. So let me play with this for a second and we're going to come back and kind of work this through. So the, the garden and the rose kind of one of the things that makes it work is taking turns. You know, I have my time, then you have your time. So if Anna's season is the next five to seven years, she's got to get the business big enough that then can you can cut back at work or you can spend the money on the house or something. Mm -hmm. And then you get five to seven years to build a house. And then five to seven, would that work for you too? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. Yes. I say yes. I mean, that's funny because we were actually, <laughs> you, having read your blog about the gardener and the rose or the garden and the rose and how it sort of, you know, you have a timeline in their example. And so we were talking through, well, what's ours? And so we had sort of landed, the sweet spot would be like, if my business could be the one bringing in the income in like six years. So like the five to seven range is right on. Yeah. And I, I purposely try to use a little bit of a range because I don't like five years and five months. Oh no. You know, like <laughs> we got to get this done in the next six, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and five to Five to seven is kind of like a season of life. Yeah, you know, if you actually look wow. at how long people live in houses, it's five to seven years. Like that's the, that's the classic. Yeah, sure. nowadays a little different, but yeah, you know, I'm guessing, Grant, if if you can if you can know, hey, within five years we're buying some land, and within seven years I'm swinging hammers. Mm -hmm. Does that work? That's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild to think because it, yeah, it's wild to think about because it always seems like such an abstract idea um, and putting a timeline on it is like really cool and really, yeah, interesting and feels good. Okay. And Anna, of course, when it's his turn to be the Rose, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. <laughs> You're going to be the one bringing sandwiches to uh, oh, the, yeah. the construction site. <laughs> uh, I, can I, I don't know about you, Grant, but I cannot have my wife help me on any projects around the house. <laughs> the last time she helped me. Okay, seriously. I, I went to put up a light and the, the the shell around it was broken. So I had to go to the store, get a new one. Come back. I'm like, hey, Vic. It was my wife. Hey, Vic, did you did you do anything in the kitchen? Nope. Stop! I'm like, oh, no. Of course, she turned <laughs> the lights on. And, you know, just, I'm like... So my rule is I do project when she's not home. <laughs> but is this something you guys are doing together or is it more, you know, this is Grant's pet project? Yeah, it's probably skewed more towards me, but you do a lot of stuff around the house, like around home improvement projects right now. So, and are very good and, and, um, and yeah, so I expect it to be the same, but I might be there longer or later or earlier. Yeah, and the desire is more yeah on your shoulders than yeah, mine. For sure. And I'll that's fine. Needed. That's the whole point of the garden and the roses. The rose can <laughs> whatever you want. Like you want to go be a pilot, you want to I don't care. Right. Um right. I mean, reality is, you know, he does not have the same interest in your business as you do. It just mm -hmm. and in the nature of the beast. Yeah. Now, with that in mind, five to seven years, we're, we're doing some property. We're going to come back to you, Anna, and your business. And, and you know, I, I'm set. There's a reason why I'm setting this the way it is. But here's the question then if we know in five to seven years we're going to start building a new place, do we still want to do all the same improvements on your existing mm. place? Yeah. Yeah. We have talked about that a little bit because we at one time had bigger plans for the house that now feel like don't make as much sense to tear down the garage and build a new one. And, yeah. 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 So, yeah, I think the timing does kind of affect some of our estimates of improvements and in this place. Mm -hmm. So let's put some numbers on it. So here's what I'm saying. We can put 20 grand of improvements into your existing house or put that 20 grand towards the new house. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I like putting it towards the new place. Yeah. Yeah. We realistically probably have like 
four to six grand that we mm-hmm. do need in this place. Yeah. Um, or I, I think that would be good to put in this place from a saleability perspective, but like flooring and yeah. That. Okay. I'm going to encourage you. Don't think about saleability yet. We're talking about selling yeah. your house in seven or 10 years. I mean, because we got to build the other one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good point. So what you would put in now versus seven. <laughs> yeah. Flooring is a great example. Who knows what flooring styles are going to be in seven years. Mm. Mm, mm-hmm. And if you put it in now, does it get destroyed on the way? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good points. <laughs> we have we have two mastiffs. So this is one of those things we think right. about. Like <laughs> we have hardwood floors, but we have to plan to get them sanded because like when they start going on the mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Right. Um, so by the way, I'm I'm not saying don't spend the money in the house. Where I'm going with this is every dollar you spend is do we do we want it now or do we want the other goal? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. okay, whichever answer you pick. It's just the balancing act. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is really good to think about. And it's good to have the, I mean, uh, we should probably put up a reminder of the goal somewhere because we will, mm-hmm. I will, I quickly, I don't know, get distracted by something else. Yep. And by the way, where we'll get to eventually is, you know, we need three hundred thousand dollars to buy the land, build the house, and we have one of those like thermometers on the on the fridge, and you know we're filling. You know, like the bonus yeah. of building it in cash, and part of the reason why I say that is it gets you a lot more flexibility. If you're doing it with a construction loan, then you got to have licensed contractors and blah blah. You know, mm. yeah, it's a different answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Grant, I can see your brain going. You're like, okay, well, this is what I need. If I... <laughs> is that fair? Is that kind of where you're going? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I can see it too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, uh, by the way, I'm going to trick you a little bit here, and I apologize, Anna. Uh, once that we get to this building the house, and, and Grant's out there doing that, you're okay with him being a little bit, I'm going to call it obsessed with that. And you know, like that's where his time and effort is. For a period of time. Yeah. We've sort of lived that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The reason I say this is a trap is because you as the Rose now can be obsessed about your stuff. And what happens being the Rose is actually harder than being the gardener because like that mm. people feel selfish. Like it's my turn. What? I, I feel, I mean, I'm not saying it's like a hundred percent one way or the other, but you know, it means you get to focus for the next five to seven years to like kick and butt on your business. And then it's Grant's turn to build whatever crazy house he comes up with. Um, he's smiling because I can read his mind. He's already like planning it out <laughs> in his head. <laughs> um, what do you think about that, Anna? Yeah. I'm in. Okay. Okay. Um, when we last left off, you were debating this question of how to measure success without it being about money or something else. What'd you two come up with? Well, I don't know if this is a good way to measure it, but, um, the thing that stuck out to me was what I find to be so valuable are the messages I'll get from people. So maybe starting to track the frequency and of when I'm getting those messages and also like that, like working towards, you know, amplify, like getting more, you know, like tracking that. And then instead of working towards a, a number of income, working towards a number of messages a week, which is, yeah. Okay. How does that feel for you? good i kind of like oh how would i do that you know like it's kind of like a a puzzle but it's an exciting one yeah and really when we go to the social media world and by the way i am not a social media genius i'm just talking about general business concepts we're really talking about how much interactivity do you get Mm -hmm. you know getting ten thousand followers but nobody ever interacts with you (laughs) right Versus, you know, 20% of my people I'm talking to every year, you know, and really hearing back from, that's a big difference. 
Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And by the way, we're going to get to the money part too, but I'm trying to shift the thought. So the way, the way I look at it is if you help enough other people to get what you want, that's kind of, that's a Zig Ziglar quote, but it's the way I live my life. Just help others and go, all right, we'll figure out finances to go with it. And, but I'm also trying to free yourself of that. You know, we had talked about you were stressed about making sure you have enough money coming in and all that. Um, is that stress still there or is that like on the back burner? Kind of where's it at? It's still there a little bit. Okay. Grant, what do you think? How can we help Anna with this? Yeah, it was interesting to um, having a couple long car rides like back and forth from our in-laws, um, my in-laws and um, talking about it then. And then also today. Um, yeah, I don't know that it's, I mean, I don't know that it's going to help exactly. But one thing that we did talk about is um, I think previous years, some of our goal setting has been like financial goal setting on both ends. Like here's like my, like what I'm going to try and do this year with between my side business and my regular business that now the side business doesn't exist. And it's a little easier for me now too, but we talked about, um, uh, not setting those same expectations, like setting expectations in terms of like you're saying like people reached and um, interactions had, and that feels, um, it feels like having the same expectations will be helpful. Cause I know sometimes I'm like, well, are we behind like, or, or not, are we sometimes I feel like, oh, we are kind of behind on our financial goals, but that's never really been as much as we've tried to make that like, the mold that we fit into, like it's never really been your goal to say like, oh, I'm going to make this amount of money every single year. It really has been about people that you um, interact with and lives that you change. And uh, I think formalizing that, I don't know if that'll be helpful this year, but to feel like, to feel like the metrics that you're using to measure your success are actually metrics that you care about and not just arbitrary mm -hmm. metrics that we're, we're, we're trying to make ourselves care about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I, I've looked at your finance and I will go over budget in a minute and all that, but you guys are, you two are fine. Okay. Like, <laughs> like seriously, you're fine. And, and, and I'm saying that as your financial planner and, and part of it is we start comparing against everybody else and mm -hmm. that just doesn't help anything. If we can get Anna's business to whatever measure we come up with in five to seven years, get Grant his house in five to seven years, you know, he switches at that five to seven years. What else would you want from life? Yeah. I don't know. I'd be happy. <laughs> I'd be happy. I'd maybe want to travel more. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay. Do you want to travel more or do you want the business? Oh, I want the business. Okay. Grant, do you want to travel more or do you want the house? Yeah, the house for sure. I'm. You can pick whatever you want. By the way, there's also big scales on travel. You know, <laughs> there's cheap right. travel and expensive <laughs> travel. Yeah. You know, I'm making it up, but, you know, maybe we put $5,000 aside a year for travel. And then... Not a penny more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And now what happens is if you want to put two years together and have one big trip, fine. You want to do a bunch of small trips, fine. But it ports a borderline around your goals and, and spending. Yeah. Yeah. That's helpful. Really helpful. What do you think about $5,000 a year? I like that. Yeah, that seems like more than we spent the last few years. Yeah. But I know also we're maybe not traveling as much as you wish we were. So that might be. You're a, also probably uh, not tracking it as well as I'm going to make you. Like, <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. Not. Yeah. Like, like, let me explain how this works. We're going to put 400 and change a month into a savings account, mark travel. Mm -hmm. And when that's zero, we're stuck at home. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and don't like, oh, we paid for this with this other card or <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Because travel is a great example. So my wife and I, we're going on a, actually on a cruise. The end of we're doing Christmas and New Year's, and when you're on a cruise, you spend extra money on just stuff, and they know it. That's why they have the <laughs> shops and the excursions. And well, mm. we're on vacation, so we can blank. Yeah, we do that. What? <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's only an extra hundred dollars. I mean, we're already on vacation. See, yeah, you do yeah. think you're special. No, you're you're not. <laughs> but my point is, you have this bucket of money, you can save it and you know do something. You know, like for example, my wife and I, we haven't traveled since pre-COVID time. Mm-hmm. She's an epidemiologist. You know, we're limiting, getting her to go anywhere to travel right now, especially on a cruise. That's a separate discussion. <laughs> uh, but we haven't traveled for two years. Well, that means our travel bucket. Full. We can go some. We can go on the nicer trips. Yeah. You know, I mean, because life happens. You know, it, it's just a balancing act. Right. So five grand for travel. Think we can make that work. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to get a budget in a second. I want to check a couple other things just on the bigger goals. So, Grant, I'm going to ask you this one, not Anna, and I don't want Anna to answer this one yet. Like, Anna, you're not allowed to answer it yet. (laughs) Um, If Anna invested everything the business makes back into the business for the next two years, would that be okay for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Now, Anna, what do you think about that? Okay. Here's where I'm going with this. When you're, when you're starting a business, you need some money to you know, run it and do whatever. And if you can have some flexibility to spend a little money, I'm not saying spend crazy. Like we're going to have a budget for the business and we're going <laughs> to, we're going to have all that separate, but I'm making it up, but maybe that's you going to a conference. Maybe that is you presenting somewhere. Maybe it is do marketing. Maybe it's a bringing in a special speaker. I don't know. Now you can invest in the business. Yeah. That would be awesome. Now, mind you, from a tax standpoint, we're going to take taxes out of that because taxes are separate. But, you know, besides taxes, you don't really count on Anna's money for the household bills for two years. Mm-hmm. Now, Anna, does that put more or less pressure on you? I think it actually takes pressure off of me. Okay. Yeah. Now, by the way, you're going to have to spend it well in the business. That's a separate discussion we're going to have. But like you guys, you two can pay your bills off of grant salary. Mm -hmm. What I'm really saying is invest in you and your business for two years. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah, because honestly, I mean, even a conversation we were having today, I feel like for me to to really get it anywhere, I need to start putting money into it. Yep. Businesses need stuff. You know, so <laughs> a great example of this is I can run my own business. That's great. But I've hired somebody to help me on my social media marketing. And I don't do those skills. Like, that's not my skill set. This is my skill set, working with clients. So I can just go take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. And let the business grow. I don't know what you, you know, we're going to work with skill sets and where you should spend the money or not. But like, for example, in my business, I spent $500 to have somebody, I don't know, the copy hackers or whatever, you know, like they redo the copy and the sales page and all this. Yep. And it, it's great. Well, that's going to move the business ahead. Mm-hmm. Those are the type of things, something, you know, I mean, you two have the technology and a few other things. Who knows what it is? Mm -hmm. Something where you're putting the time and effort into it, marketing, whatever it is, to make it grow. Now, reality check. I'm hoping you don't spend all of what you bring in for the business. (laughs) I'm hoping at the end of two years, there's some money left over in the bank. But but it gives you a two-year runway to kind of go, is this going to work out or not? You know, reality check is... 
two years from now, if the business is not paying its bills, probably not going to make it. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case in Europe, but people that start a small business, if you can't pay your own bills in two years, you're throwing money into it. It's not a business. Mm -hmm. So we have to figure out the balancing act. Um, who knows? Maybe we get to the end of two years and you got, you know, $50,000 left of the business that can go towards paying off the house or buying the next one. I don't know. That would be amazing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So let's look at budget. And I took everything you put in there and let's gonna mess with it. Uh, we're going to work with real numbers now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Anna out of this because we just agreed we're taking her money away. Grant, do you get paid every other week? Uh, yeah, uh, 15th and 30th of the month. Okay, so it's bi-monthly, technically. And I was guessing based, based on what you put there that it's about 3500 bucks of paycheck? Yeah. Nice. I've been doing this a while. <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, pretty close. <laughs> um, when we get done with your um, your benefits, that might shift a little, but we're going to try to spend the money in the right place. This is what I call the money management system, and I'll send you more on this. And actually, there's a whole course on this one in the, the online system. We take 10% away for safety and security. I'm going to come back to that, but that's really your emergency fund. You know, and we really need to be making some progress there. Yeah. Then we have must, shoulds, coulds, and wants. If you've done any like uh, time management, oh, this is actually a time management system, old school. It works. So, so the mortgage, I, did I see it was seven thirty nine. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is the property taxes in that mortgage? Yeah, they are. And the and the in home insurance is in the mortgage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right now we have Anna's health insurance here. If it comes out, we by the way we would actually probably pay that out of the business. I'm going to leave it here for now, or we're going to pay it out of grant. So we'll update that. What I'm essentially doing is I'm making your budget for December because we're here November 28th. So it works perfect. Uh, groceries, you put 500 bucks a month. That's kind of the normal for two people, um, unless you're like getting really fancy. Uh, mm -hmm. Electric, water, sewer. Do you have like gas or oil for heat? No. It's all electric. Mm -hmm. okay. One note on that. Uh, most places have a budget billing option where they split it over 12 months. So you don't have the ups and downs. They mm. just take what have you, what you paid over the year and you're paying the same bill every month. So yeah, that we might do be have access to that. To yeah. It, it's one of those, like you just check the box and it yeah. makes it easier. Okay. Uh, auto loan. We don't have anything, right? No auto loan. Nope. Um, insurance. This is actually going to be, yeah, they did it right. 52 for six months. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think that didn't have our other car though. Yeah. We do have another car that is hopefully going to be sold in December. Okay. Um, but for the month of December, we will also have like another $52 in there. Okay. So I'm going to make a note. Goal for December to sell the second car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been having a discussion with people who work from home. Like, why do you have two cars? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, how much do we spend on gas a month? For Damn. cars? I think we like, we only fill up the tank once a year, once a month, probably. Well, I was going to say, once a year, I'm impressed. No. <laughs> it's about 50 um, bucks. Yeah. Okay. No credit cards? I mean, no, no balances on the credit cards. Correct. Right. Um, no student loans. So mine are, they have, they're, they're tied up right now. I've been approved for the forgiveness. Um, but yeah, they're in forbearance until next August now. Or Which forgiveness program are you doing? Or the national one, the one that. The 10, 20 grand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How so much is I have th three grand left in loans, but. Okay. So one little thing on that. Okay. So this has gotten weird. Um, it's in the court. Um, the date got pushed and it said June 30th, plus or minus 60 days, depending on when the court cases are done. Oh. Which it could be that you start paying payments in February or March 
or it could be August or, you know, like it's, it's like this weird thing. So I will send you emails when I get anything on the student loans that I know you have one. Um, okay. What we'll do is we're going to kick the can as far as we can, but don't be surprised. They're like, Oh, the court denied the case. And in March you get to start paying it. Okay. Uh, nobody knows for sure. And Grant, sure. no student loans? No. Nope. Okay. I did see a home equity line of credit. And it's got a thousand dollars we owe on that. Yes. Uh, monthly minimum is probably what, 75 or hundred bucks? Yeah, something like that. We we yeah, we just paid off a a bunch of it. And so I feel like the thousand dollars that we have left, yeah, it is probably It'd be nice if we could just pay off $100 a month and get it. Oh, I'm going to have you pay it off even faster than that, but we'll come back to that. <laughs> uh, Perfect. And then there was another consumer loan or something? Yeah, I had forgotten about that one. That's for the solar panels that we have. Okay. How much is owed there? 8000 mm -hmm. Okay. Any idea what the monthly minimum is? Probably oh. 300 bucks, 250 something. Yeah, I don't have to top of my head, but that that sounds pretty. Okay, sounds we'll do three hundred. Um, any other loans? Mm -mm. Okay. Any other bills you must pay each month? Now, when I talk about must, I'm talking about things keep a roof over your head, required by law. You know, like monthly minimum payments on on a loan is like you signed up for it, but anything like that that you must pay each month. Not that I, I can so. think of. Okay. Here's what happens. You have $2,327 each month of musts. Now you're both going, oh, okay. If you say so, like, you know, this is part of that yeah. budgeting process of getting used to it. So that means like, heaven forbid, one of you gets hurt. You need like mm. 2,500 bucks to keep the roof over your head and fed. Yeah. How does that feel? Um, uh, pretty reasonable. I mean, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, our, like our house is pretty modest. So if, and in our car, like not having a lot of loans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it feels pretty reasonable and it also feels like I know the, the two loans we have would be nice to pay off for the house, but, um, yeah, our expenses are, I don't know. feels pretty manageable. Okay. Now I'm going to, this, this is a little rough question. So I apologize. But if I looked at your savings accounts this year and your, your, what you owe on the loans and a year ago, did you make much progress or were we about in the same place? Same place. Yeah. We did not make a lot of progress. Okay. So what that tells me, and I'm going to get into this in a second, but it, it essentially says that you guys are spending $4,500 a month on stuff. <laughs> now, by the way, stuff is a big term, but it's everything that's not the roof over your head. And, and there's probably 500 bucks with it. We're going to get into shoulds. Makes sense. But that means we're spending four grand a month on just stuff. Where I was going, and that's why I started with the goals, is we should instead be putting four grand a month towards Anna's business and Grant's house. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you spent 50 grand over the past year on stuff that could have been going towards your goals. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that? We should have been doing this sooner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. We we do like it, it is. It is so good to finally feel like we are like putting some numbers down because. Uh, I think I get frustrated sometimes where I'm like, where does like, where does it all go? I know that like our income increased and it just doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like it all the time. And I feel like, um, like we probably went out to eat more than we needed, like definitely more than we needed to, um, yeah. in the couple months after, you know, my new job. And I feel like we, I don't know, bought some things that maybe we had wanted for a while, but it is like, um, 
it's so easy to do that in the moment. And then when you put it in terms of like, well, what would you rather have the house or this, uh, I don't know, couch for outside or whatever. Uh, it seems, my couch. <laughs> it seems so, yeah, it seems so, um, so much clearer, like what to do with that extra income that we have. And by the way, I'm not saying like, you could have no fun. Like that's a, you know, we're gonna have a separate discussion on that. And by the way, this does not include right now your bonus. Mm-hmm. Your bonus is gonna go to either paying down debt or the goals. That's kind of cool. one of those things. Cool. So watch this. So now we go to our shoulds. We have the internet, cable, get any other streaming services or anything we need to put in there. That is our those are ours. Yep. Yeah, I think that's covered. Cell phone? 60. Okay. Um we need to get disability insurance. We'll get there. Uh, are you, but you're not paying separately for disability. You had life insurance. You had a term life something in there. Yeah, mine is a twenty four thirty three a month that comes out for that. Right. We'll I come back. That one too. Yeah, I, feel like it, I don't know what it is, to be honest. Okay, like so we're going to have to go something. question on Grant. Yeah. We're going to come back and have a different discussion on life insurance. But we'll leave it for now. Okay. Um, auto repairs. Let's put 200 bucks a month towards it. That's tires, oil changes. You put it aside and then come back to it. Okay. Uh, the house, uh, what's the house worth off the top of your head? You wonder? Uh, 100 mm-hmm. grand. By the way, I think I looked it up. It was more than that, but all right. Let's go with, um, so we do 1% of the house. And eh, let's go with 200 bucks a month for home repairs and maintenance. Now, by the way, that is not like improvements. That's like things breaking. Oh, okay. Sure. Inside. Are you two big gift givers? I am. <laughs> okay. How much do we need to put in for gifts per month? Um, a hundred. I'm waiting for Grant's reaction to see if it's <laughs> real or not. It's hard with the holidays now. Yeah. It will be much more than a hundred. The holidays come the same time of year every year. Okay. <laughs> um what yeah, I don't know what I don't know what the average would be. Cause some months I don't there nobody has a birthday or anything, sure. you know. Yeah, it may be a hundred dollars a month. Okay, so all three of these we put into a sinking fund, which literally means we just put it into savings and we pull it out when we need it. We'll come back to that. Tuco only needs 50 bucks a month for pet stuff. Yeah. Okay, that feels weird to me. I got two Mastiffs. They can do 50 bucks in a day if it's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we keep buying food. I'm like, aren't they out of that? Okay. <laughs> so you got about $769 of shoulds. So that says you got about $3,100 a month in regular bills. In the coulds, I put travel already in here and dining out, but we're saying, all right, we want, let's call it 400 bucks a month, which will get you $4,800 for the year. Uh, can you live on dining out with 200 bucks a month? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we took travel and dining out. All right. So here's what happens. That's $600 more. So we actually have each month $3,300 we can be putting towards our debt. Which, by the way, I'm sure you've never put $3,300 towards your debt in one month. Mm-mm. That's the stuff, the real stuff. Like, Because we talked about gifts. We talked about like putting aside for the house. We talked about putting aside for travel, dining out. Still, we got money left. Mm-hmm. So, Grant, when you said, hey, it'd be great if we could pay this off. You're paying that off in December. Yeah. Huh? Right. These these two together are paid off in the next three months. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Um, and yeah, really cool. And we have, I don't know, we've talked about like right now we're paying like mortgage insurance and I it would be nice like to get below that threshold where we don't have that cost anymore. Um, I think there are yeah. It, it would be really valuable to pay some of that off sooner rather than later. So when did you buy the house? 
2019, August. Um, which one of you is the person that, that calls the mortgage company? <laughs> Neither of us, but I suppose <laughs> me. Grant, I want you to call them tomorrow. Ask them to do an appraisal for removal of PMI. Okay. Yeah. You probably had enough growth that that'll magically take it off. Cool. Um, I'm going to add that to your homework. Okay. Uh, it's one of those like, doesn't always happen that way, but the last three years, your house has probably gone up more than that 20% for the PMI. Yeah. Um, now, by the way, you'll probably have to pay like 500 bucks for the appraisal or something, and I don't care. Uh, pay that, but uh, cool. you, you should you should be okay either. Um, I did a like computer appraisal, and it came up much higher than 100 grand. So we'll see. Nice. Um. All right. So that means uh, what what I did, by the way, is I took your safety and security and put it towards paying down your debt. Because it's essentially doing the same thing. I just, we got to get rid sure. of this debt because we're paying for it. So essentially, we used every dollar except $3.67, <laughs> which you can blow however you want. <laughs> coffee. Yes. <laughs> I'm not even sure that'll buy a coffee. But... <laughs> um, yeah, well, here. Maybe. Maybe if I just get like their house made. That's exactly what you should be doing. I bought my wife an espresso machine for our house. <laughs> Because it was cheaper to buy her an espresso machine and the good beans than for her to go out to Starbucks. I'll take that. <laughs> you should do that. <laughs> I, when I talk about buying an espresso machine, I'm like the hundred dollar, two hundred dollar machine, not like the five thousand know. <laughs> dollar. Um, there's like a Mister Coffee espresso machine, and it's actually pretty good. Like, yeah, you know, like like a home espresso machine. It works. It's not perfect, but I buy her the good Starbucks beans, and you know, yeah, good enough. Um, yeah. So, by the way, Grant, hint, hint, buy Anna a, a, a special <laughs> machine for Christmas. Maybe two birds with one stone, yeah. See? I got it's you covered. Budget. It is good. Right. I have you covered. <laughs> Dr. J says so. It's okay. No. Um, now, what's going to happen the first month when you try to live on this budget? We're going to have missed something. Something's going to be screwed up. Sure. My goal like, so if we say, hey, December went well, I want to see at least 2,500 bucks go towards your debt. Cool. Now here's, now, here's the thing. Remember, Grant, you're like, oh, five to seven years from now, I want to be able to buy a house. But once the debt's gone, you got $3,000 a month that goes towards yeah. the house. Wow. Yeah, that is cool. I mean. That's a lot. That adds up. We could, how much you got left on your mortgage? I had it down here somewhere. 90 or something, 85? 85. 85, 85 yeah. sounds about 85, right. 85, 647. I got my 85, 647. I have to be able to read my handwriting is the problem. <laughs> but we're going to have a debate if we're going to pay that off or put it towards the other property. But we could in three years have you owing nothing. You pay off the mortgage and everything you ever owned. In three years, you own no debt to anyone in the world. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's wild. And by the way, Anna, that's why you're building your business. Mm. See, here's the thing. It's not a math thing. It's a but it's a behaviors in your mindset around mm. money. Yeah. So when the question is, hey, do we buy this outdoor couch? I'm just gonna pick on that. <laughs> or do we want our business and our house? We're gonna pass up on the outdoor couch. It brings me so much joy. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> I'm okay with that. Then what we do is we lump this together and this becomes spending money. Mm. So maybe you have to save up a couple months for it. Okay. What well, I'm doing I'll is get my treadmill. treadmill. Yes, I saw the treadmill in there. We'll get there. <laughs> but where I'm going with this is they, they, they joke about it, but it's kind of true. It's different between thinking as a child, thinking as an adult. Child does what feels good and they just do it. The adult sets a plan. Mm -hmm. there is no reason why you can't be buying this new property in five years for cash and building it a couple years after that for cash 
And that we didn't even take into account your bonuses, raises, Anna's business kicking butt. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. What are you two thinking? Let's pause there. You go first. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it feels like um, uh, it feels like we magically like have like more than we did this morning. Yeah. Like just, um, yeah, it's oh. so nice to approach it intentionally instead of just being like, well, we can afford this. We should maybe like, why not get this or go out to eat or whatever. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so nice to have it laid out and it'll be interesting. Um, I know you've been talking about other accounts and stuff. It'll be interesting to set things up to make it, um, make it like, so we have to think less about it. Yep. I don't know if that's going to happen, but. Yep, we will automate it all. Um, what I'm doing, by the way, I want you to like to struggle the first month. I want you to feel it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if, if you go in uh, the TikTok world, they'll call it cash stuffing now, which used to be the old school ev envelope method where you put money in envelopes and you, you you literally use cash. We can do a whole, we'll do a whole bunch of tricks as we get forward. Really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you your goals. So here's what I did. Laid out your goals of the house and the business. And you two are like, wow, those are pie in the sky goals. Then I took you through the numbers. You're like, they're not so crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's... Yeah. yeah. I think I'm still wrapping my head around it, that we can actually do these things that we want to do that felt like they were 20 years off, if ever achievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. I mean, the truth is you guys have done well. You, you don't have much debt, you know, besides the solar and the, and the, the home equity line. We'll take, yeah, we'll take care of that. And by the way, for the other things you have to finish off with the house, we'll pay cash with those, you know, because we don't want to go back to the loans again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then it's just about building a habit. And yes, we'll automate as much as we can of it, but effectively what we'll get to eventually is $1,500 of grants paycheck each month goes towards goal saving account. Sure. Now, by the way, we want to build an emergency fund. We're going to do a couple of things, but but it's going to come off the top. Then yeah. everything else that's left over, you could spend. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, super cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Questions? I, I got nothing. No, nothing specifically. Yeah, just, yeah looking forward to doing whatever's next to okay. put things in place yeah here's what's next i'm going to send you in your homework um a, a, a document that it talks about how to have budget meetings so you two are going to meet once a week and look at your budget why do we do it weekly because then you can make changes you know like for example in the holiday time oh i spent more on dining out or gifts or something we need to make an adjustment you want to be doing that on a weekly basis rather than get to the end of the month and go Where'd all our money go? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. One of the things that I'm seeing that already from you two, um, it sounds like you two are already starting to talk a lot more about money. Is that fair? Like the two of you having conversations. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're doing is once a week, you know, if you want to grab an adult beverage and, you know, hang out and work on budget, fine. Um, the right capital software, you can actually put your accounts in there and you can track them in real time. You could also try there's apps mint and you need a budget. There's a bunch of them. Doesn't really matter whichever one you like. Um, the Excel form is just my simple way of doing it. And it works, whatever works for you. And then you're going to start working on it weekly. Next time we meet, we're going to talk about your benefits. We got to do some tweaks on the paycheck, all that. Um, so we'll do that and that'll adjust the budget for January. And okay. we're going to just get in the habit. It's going to take like three, four or five months for you to like make a budget part of every day. And then we're going to shift also to start talking more about Anna's business and how do we launch it and the business of finance around there and doing that. At the, you know, so we're, we're, we're building off of it. We're setting, you know, to, to use Grant's house, we're setting a foundation first. That's the budget. And then we're going to build the house on top of it. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. 
I feel hopeful. Thank you. That's all for this week's episode of Child Free Wealth Podcast. Be sure to follow Child Free Wealth on social media, email us at podcast at childfreewealth.com or visit our website, www.childfreewealth.com.